John chapter 4. It's the story of the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan. Good morning. Thanks for joining me on the journey to the cross. One of the amazing aspects about the journey to the cross was how Jesus would take time with people. In John chapter 3, we've been reading and reflecting on the story of Nicodemus. In John chapter 4, we come to the story of the woman at the well. What's so fascinating about these two stories, it's as typical of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He takes time for everyone. Now, when he was in Jerusalem, he met a man by the name of Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, a scholar of the laws of Moses. But now he's on his way back north to Galilee. It's about a 75 mile walk. And halfway between Jerusalem and Galilee is Samaria. And he stops and the Bible says he's tired. He sets at Jacob's well to rest. When a woman comes by, a Samaritan woman, the Bible says she is shocked, surprised that Jesus speaks to her. He's the one that begins the conversation. Now, what's so fascinating about this story is it's in contrast to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was Jewish. He was religious. He was a scholar. And Jesus offers him eternal life. But what about a Samaritan? What about a woman? She can believe that Jesus is speaking to her. Why is that? Well, you have to go back to the history of Israel where they divided from the United Kingdoms of Israel into two kingdoms. And in the Northern Kingdom of Israel, they would worship false gods and idols up in Samaria. Their kingdom would fall apart and the Assyrians would capture them. 722 BC. Now, 700 years later, we have a Samaritan woman. What's a Samaritan? Well, you see the empire of the Assyrians, their strategy to destroy people was to have their people marry those that they captured. That's right, the Jewish people. So the Assyrians persuaded the Jewish men to marry Assyrian women. And what do you get? You get a Samaritan. Did you know that's where the Samaritans came from? And that's the reason why there's such animosity between the Jewish people and the Samaritan people, because they were part Jew and part Assyrian. And so they would have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Not only was she a Samaritan, she was a woman. And as we come to the end of the story and the disciples return to find Jesus, they're shocked that he's speaking to a woman. She was a Samaritan. She was a woman. But the story gets deeper. For Jesus actually asked her, he said, why don't you go call your husband? And then he says to her, you've had five husbands. Now, I sat under a rabbi to study one time for a year at Cal State Fullerton. He told me that the tradition in the Bible days of women were they were property. And when it came to divorce, he said, it was never their idea for they had no rights. When I think of this story and what the rabbi taught me, is this was not her choice to have five husbands. She had been rejected five times. And now Jesus said she's living in immorality. What's amazing about this story is the contrast between Nicodemus and the woman at the well. Let's review. She was a Samaritan. She was a woman. And she came from many, many broken relationships. But glory be to God, no matter who we are, God loves us. And Jesus loves Nicodemus, and he loves the woman at the well.
And the same way that Jesus offers eternal life to Nicodemus, he offers eternal life to the woman at the well. He speaks of a living water where she'll never be thirsty again. And then he tells her when she says she's been searching for the Messiah, he says, I am the Messiah. Now you imagine that. He is revealing that he's the son of God, the son of man. He's revealing that he's the Messiah to a woman, to a Samaritan, to a woman that's been divorced five times. When I study and pray this morning, I get so excited about this story because God loves each and every one of us. We're not perfect. We have many battle scars. We've been through many valleys. We've been through many storms. And no matter what you've been through, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves Nicodemus. Jesus loves the woman at the well. And Jesus loves you. Oh, Father God, I thank you for everlasting life. I thank you for the living water. I thank you that we'll never thirst again. It is not about how smart we are or good we are, whether we're a scholar or not. You love us just the way we are. We proclaim Jesus as the Lamb of God, the light of the world. We, just, we declare Jesus as our personal Savior. Bless your word, Father, I pray, to each heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You be blessed as you meditate on John chapter 4, the journey to the cross.